You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? Happy New Year! Ding, ding, ding! You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I am one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong. And I'm the other host. I'm Rachel Weeks. Rachel Weeks is in the house. Josh Lequa is not. <laughs> He's outside freezing his butt off. Uh, not on this episode, but Josh would also like to wish you a very happy new year as well. Yeah. Today. Speaking of the new year. Yeah, we're talking about all the bad habits that you need to quit in 2023. All the commander bad habits. That is. <laughs> yes, we're being great. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is everything from uh, commander faux pas, like little uh, habits that you can quit to become a more polite player, uh, uh, to things that you are lazy about in game that's going <laughs> to make you a better player yeah it's uh gonna cover the whole spectrum we're really happy to get into it but before we talk about those bad habits let's talk about some good habits first one up cardkingdom.com slash command it's a great habit to just make sure that when you type card kingdom into your browser you add the slash command to the end because it gets to the exact same site but now you're supporting the show of the command zone and the command zone Absolutely. podcast and game nights and yeah you don't have to do any extra work because you're already going to get the cards you need and we love card kingdom because what they get to you is also the cards in a single package i've ordered like 17 packages before of cards and typically i lose about one in ten and that is not great when that one in ten has an order that you want to make sure gets to your doorstep uh, it has nothing to do with the the shipper even sometimes it just happens to be that way but card Kingdom gets you in there in a single package and they've got great customer service as well as a huge inventory tons of reasons to go check out card kingdom they even have buyback programs and all sorts of different things and the only way you can find out is just going to cardkingdom.com slash command to get your magic cards sealed product singles today straight to your doorstep you're gonna love it yeah and once those cards are in your hand you're gonna need to protect them you're gonna need to organize them you're gonna need to store them go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up all of the products that you need to organize and protect your collection uh they have all of the play mats and the amazing products that you need with official magic art on them it looks so cool look at the play here on yeah, the table yeah, yeah the characters you love the cards you love all in full color on your binders and on your sleeves all over the place yeah. uh you can find that all on ultrapro.com slash command or at your local lgs that's right local lgs <laughs> your, lo- your, uh, your lgs automatic atm machine <laughs> okay moving on we also have patreon.com slash command zone we love our patrons they are our bedrock we talk to them every single day in our discord we got rachel in there answering questions all sorts different questions in our discord you can ask her those questions by joining our patreon getting on that discord and um, um, our amazing community there There's so many amazing kind people and they're willing to help you out and have great conversations about magic cards and just get more into the hobby and i love that because it's a nice place for us to gather and to talk with some of our biggest fans because mm-hmm. we're kind of big fans of them too we have so many recognizable names at this point mm-hmm. we also shout out one lucky patron every single week and this week's episode is dedicated to mm-hmm. eric, eric hannah, hannah. thanks eric, eric. You rock. you rock. Thanks for going to patreon.com slash command zone. Okay, <laughs> let's get right into it. Commander, bad habits you need to quit. This year, this is the year you become a better magic player. You yeah. become better at playing. You become more fun to play against. You get your cards in order. This is the one. Yeah. Uh, and here are some of the commander bad habits that we see a lot and would like to you to knock off uh <laughs> knock it off kid <laughs> the way we're gonna do this is that we have 10 bad habits here mm-hmm. and each of them we're gonna say what the bad habit is and then we're going to explain the habit as section one and then section two for each of these is the problem why the habit what the habit causes and why it's bad and then of course the last bit is the cure so we got the habit the problem and the cure so let's kick things off with bad habit numero uno what is the first habit rachel I, I see this a lot in new players, but it lasts way too long. It's resolving phases incorrectly, mm. especially in those beginning phases. I think players have a tendency to really rush through the untap, upkeep, draw, main one phase. Right. Or do it in the wrong order. Or do it all out of order. When I first started playing at my local game store, my one of the guys kept stopping me because I would draw and then untap and <laughs> then go to my main phase. And he was like, you can't. That's just not. That's just not the order those go in right and it's and it matters <laughs> yeah i mean that it's just incorrect and it makes things confusing for you and your opponent so here's the problem with uh rushing through the first steps and maybe even resolving them incorrectly yeah so a lot of cards 
say specifically upkeep or main and it will change what happens in the game to the point where if you don't abide by this correctly you may cause more chaos and more confusion and create moments where people need to take back plays mm. so for instance sagas attractions and some shrines don't trigger on your upkeep they trigger on the beginning of your first main phase mm. cards like phyrexian arena or other things that do our upkeep triggers happen on your upkeep so knowing those makes it a clear board state. Not knowing those leads to states where someone can make a mistake not knowing what's going on, or you can make a mistake not knowing what's going on either. Yeah, Commander is complicated. It is all about communication and clarification, especially when we're playing on Spell Table all the oh, time. Yeah. Because you can't see your opponents usually, and you can see their board states, but if they're rushing through the steps that they're taking, and they're, or they're not doing it in the right order, it can cause confusion and chaos, especially if your opponents are trying to interact. Because a right. lot of the time you're trying to interact before your opponent draws a card. Yeah, right. You don't want them to have that extra card draw, but you want them to sort of, at the beginning of their turn, lock something down or do something in response to something. Or even if they mm -hmm. don't have an upkeep trigger and they just rush through to it, you need to go, hold on, stop on your upkeep. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes it really just becomes like a clerical game thing. Like, hey, I need to do something to maximize my chances of winning here. And I wasn't able to do it because we, we don't really do the untap upkeep draw thing anymore. We just kind of rush through it. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, it makes it difficult for you to remember your triggers. Yeah. If, you, if you don't stop for the upkeep, then you, you end up two in your main two, and you're like, oh, I was supposed to draw for Phyrexian Arena, and oh, I didn't. Whoops, Can yeah. I draw Or a now? turn later, you're like, hey, guys, I actually forgot to draw two cards this yeah. game. Can I do it? So that's not a lot of fun. So how do we fix this? What's the cure to, to this bad habit? We're going to say this one a lot today, but it's mm -hmm. just slow on down there, cowboy. Take it easy. Uh, you know, come on and kick the crap with me over here as you untap. Then go to your upkeep, and then go to your draw. Being deliberate mm -hmm. is really important because when you say the steps out loud as you do them, a lot of players do this, we do this on game nights, no one's going to look at you strange. It's a very normal thing to do, mm -hmm. but it also will allow you to remember, untap, upkeep, I have an upkeep trigger. Mm -hmm. I got to do it. Yeah, treat those beginning phases like a checklist. You're yeah. going, like, check at your upkeep. Do I have any upkeep triggers? Check at your draw step. Do I have anything that happens in my draw step? Then go to your main phase. And then the rest of your turn <laughs> it happens in order and happens correctly and you don't have to wind anything back to those beginning phases because you just rush into it yeah and another common thing we see all the time is you can use a dice a coin a counter or something to put on top of your deck so before you even go to draw that card wait why can't i draw the card that's a dice on top of your that's right i have an upkeep trigger so allowing yourself to give those little reminders to yourself is a really great way you're basically accounting for what's on your board and understanding what's happening and you're giving yourself a little nudge to be like hey don't forget there partner <laughs> it's right here <laughs> yeah, say it in your sleep before you go to bed. Untap, Untap upkeep, upkeep, draw. Uh, mm, that last one is really, I love that part. It's the best one. Yeah, it's that's the best. One. That's why step. we rush to it. Yeah, yeah. we well, want to go right to draw. Right to draw, okay. Uh, the next bad habit that you need to work on this year, it is uh, that you have to work on stopping this year, is <laughs> poorly representing your board state. Yep. Oh, this is one where you don't have the tokens, you don't have enough dice, and you're just finding stuff near you to represent <laughs> tokens and treasures. This, this beer can this is a one one. Pen represents a four four, and and this pile of paper is the number of plus one counters. Yeah, and it's it just <laughs> makes things messy and confusing, especially because the game itself is only getting more confusing with mm -hmm. more keyword counters. Right, we got all sorts of different types of charge counters and things on all that so when you don't have enough dice this is the bad habit right you don't have the dice or the tokens or ways to represent it in a clear way to your opponent mm -hmm. and this happens all the time i'm very guilty of it i'll build a new deck draw my seven and go oh shoot i don't have one one red elemental creature tokens with haste and it's important they have haste because when they start swinging at people and they don't know what it is they they should know it has haste so that happening or having legible cards yeah if you have a play test card that you're just practicing with before you buy it in from cardkingdom.com <laughs> slash Thank you, command Rachel. and your opponents can see it but it's just a little piece of paper and it, with you like can't a, really a, a with a scribble on, on it and yeah. you're like i don't what is this what crater it, hoof behemoth yeah what <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> crater hoof's good you can probably just pick that one up yeah you probably don't need to play test it too much yeah exactly um yeah, it, it makes it very confusing. So the problem with this is that it soaks up mental bandwidth. A lot of it, actually. Yeah, if you're remembering, okay, this D4 is a little wizard, and those six D, D6 are, those, that, those are 36 counters on <laughs> that planeswalker. It's confusing, and you're just not really sure 
What's happening? Yeah, what what's happening? You can find yourself in the middle of combat and find out that they have a 5-5 five, five with reach. Yeah. And, and it was represented with an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> or you're swinging against someone else and they go, whatever, I don't block. And that you go, wait, but that's actually lethal because of this. And they're like, wait, what? I don't know what's going on. And then when they ask you to explain it, you don't even know what's going on. You're like, I think that's a 4-4. Four, four. No, 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 this is a 2-2. Two, two. Sorry, this is a 2-2 two, two, and there's two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Mm. You can see how very quickly this gets into the territory where it's like, this game has not become more fun at the further this interaction goes yeah overall it just slows down gameplay you spend more time asking questions about what that die says what that die says and they're like oh this one's just a die yeah I mean, this one goes over here i think, I'm I, sorry. think I rolled it like a couple turns ago yeah just it's, it's, it's just mess yeah. um situations where you have to have take backs are generally what you want to avoid mm -hmm. because if it becomes a game where everyone is taking back something every other turn you're not really playing a game anymore. You're kind of just stumbling through Commander. So again, when you're ha when you're clear the board state, when people know what's going on, and you have the right tokens and all that, you're not going to do anything that hurts the overall experience. And yeah. that's the cure, right? Get that's the tokens the you need. Go to cardcane.com slash command. They got tons of tokens there. Yeah. And we know that tokens are also expensive. And some of them are kind of like, for some reason, like oh, this Pegasus or whatever from yeah, this old set like is. it's like crazy $6 yeah. or something like that. You don't have to buy the official ones for every single thing. There's lots of ways that you can represent that accurately. Mm -hmm. That still communicates. You could write on a piece of paper, unicorn, one, one, or uh, it has yeah. first strike. And that's all the information that your opponents need. And so much clearer than just using a paperclip or a die or something that's lying around. Really big shout out to Infinite Tokens. They make an amazing product. They actually ask themselves this question. Hey, we keep poorly representing our board state. Is there anything we can do? Oh, of course. Make a product. And that's Infinite Tokens. These are little dry erase tokens that you can scribble on. And if you steal someone's creature, make a copy. Mm -hmm. You got it all there. Yeah, they're perfect. And they're great thing, uh, great for trigger reminders as well. Yeah. Like I will write upkeep trigger and put it on top of my deck and it'll tell me exactly what I need to remember oh, when nice. I'm rushing through my untap upkeep and draw. Yeah. Um, other than that, like I know there's a ton of tokens now. You have to have tokens for everything. You have to yes. have dungeons so and monarch tokens and zombie tokens. And I, I had to have just uh, adapted to getting one box that has all of the common tokens in it. Um, oh, okay. So it's just yeah. like, a, hey, I know all my decks have treasures, so I just have a treasure token. Yeah, I use zombie tokens in four or five different decks. So I can bring zombie tokens with me wherever I go so I know that I have them. Also, stuff that comes up in games, you know, 3-3 three, three elephants, 3-3 three, three uh, apes. Okay, yep. So we beasts just within, all that two, stuff. Yeah, 2-2 two, two birds. 3-3 three, three beasts. Oh, exactly. yeah, there's always a 3-3 three, three beast on the table. 2-2 two, two bird tokens are crazy expensive. If you only have one and you bring it with you all the time, you're always prepared. Yeah, also places like Card Kingdom have their own line of mm -hmm. tokens as well that are done amazing art you can even go find sometimes on artist websites they'll sell their own custom tokens and stuff yeah so there's lots of cool options out there it can be another way for you to personalize your deck while also most importantly curing yourself of having this bad habit and br properly representing your board state and you're being you're prepared to play your deck that's a big one yeah it's just having the game pieces you need to play what you've brought you know it's like showing up to your friend's house with monopoly and it's missing half the cards <laughs> you're like <laughs> no i represent the hundred dollar bills with my my socks oh yeah that one that thimble is actually uh my grandma's using it yeah for <laughs> sewing so i she use, has tiny hands i have buttons <laughs> i have buttons <laughs> that i use for that but even then if you are like you know you're playing a deck with acorn tokens or whatever yeah. right? and you want to have little cute acorn tokens as long as you're able to properly represent what's going on and your opponents can understand it then you are not poorly representing your board state you're properly representing your board state so again that's the habit and that's the cure your opponents will thank you i'm gonna thank you the next thank bad <laughs> habit that you have to kick this year it is apologizing for playing the game yeah i'm sorry that i gotta do this right now oh i i, I this doesn't normally happen i'm so sorry i don't uh, hold on just can you give me like another couple seconds i'm sorry this never happens with my deck i swear yeah. It's, oh, I'm so Cut sorry. I have to remove your commander right now when you're going off. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm so sorry that I had all this fast mana in my hand. Magic the Gathering is a game where players play to win the game. And yeah. winning means you got to make some decisions. And I know you, you're thinking, like, what's the problem with that? Right? Yeah, like, right. What, what's like, the problem what, yeah, with apologizing? With apologizing? And it, it's interesting because, first of all, apologizing should be unnecessary most of the time. 
uh, like you, you just you're wasting air that could be used to explain what is <laughs> happening on your board. We don't understand. But it also sets a tone that interaction or powerful synergies are something that you need to apologize for. Oh yeah, they're inherently bad. Yeah, there's something wrong. bad about them or amoral, and that's just not the case. There yeah. are no amoral magic cards. There's no magic cards that are for bad people. That's yeah, no, that's not how magic cards work. It's a game. And with magic too, what you're doing to someone that you feel the need to apologize for has probably been done to other people and mm. people do it all the time because maybe that's just a part of the game so that's another reason why it's unnecessary is that if you start apologizing for something you're doing over and over again or you just always apologize your apologies also just start to not mean anything and that is a problem because when you yeah. do need to apologize for something then that was the point right it's the boy who cried wolf that at that point you need to make sure that your apology is genuine because otherwise it's like Rachel said, you're kind of wasting a lot of breath and not creating an optimal outcome for yourself. Yeah, and it, don't apologize for mistakes in Commander. That's a part of Commander. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're going to learn from those. That's great. And sometimes mistakes can make an, a game even more fun. Yeah. So many times, this is the case with me, I make a mistake and it creates a possibility that was not there before. Mm. And if you're just looking to have fun and play the game, the mistakes are a part of that process and journey and everyone makes them. Even the most professional, high-level players in the world. Magic is a game with almost infinite things that can happen every single game, right? In very in very and ways so don't apologize so here's the problem here's the cure not the problem we talked about the problem yeah how do you fix this because i like i understand this this bad habit and i think it's one i probably have is when when i'm doing something and i'm taking up a lot of time i'm Mm -hmm. like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and it comes from an anxiety that you're up you're taking up too much time yeah you're you're upsetting somebody right and we're not saying that apologizing is bad but here's how to start apologizing less is just know what you're bringing to the table goldfish your deck <laughs> understand what your deck can do and how to do it yeah so this is I, just normal good deck building behavior too yeah right? like whenever people are like oh my deck's never done this it was like you're not practicing your deck enough <laughs> you don't understand what your deck can do and, and sometimes goldfish it's okay. can help that yeah yeah i think you can definitely help that but sometimes it's okay to bring a new deck and learn yeah. something new about it but if it's like this is your commander this is how it should work and this mm-hmm. is right like Cor- corvax or whatever Cor- whatever you know the sacrifice one the jump corval. one corval yeah right people are like oh, i didn't know this is what happened like if you had played this deck any number of times you know this is exactly what yeah, happened you would understand that yeah and it, recognize that commander is a high variance game yeah sometimes you're gonna have that crazy hand that you're like whoa i popped off so much faster than i normally do and you can generally trust your opponents to understand that when you have a soul ring into a signet or a soul ring yeah. into lightning greaves or something on your first turn that that's not something that happens all the time and will shoot you into the later game yeah it just happens too right like and i I like that a lot which is you are there to play the game and sometimes you're just going to win and have it all and wouldn't you rather have that victory and feel good about it than needing to apologize through the whole thing and then yeah. kind of feeling soured about it no nah, right like it's okay to win we're all trying to get there to win the main thing is when you're doing something and you feel the need to apologize for ask yourself what am i actually apologizing for mm-hmm. and if it is a real thing then you may need to have a conversation with your play group like you know when i had that 20 minute turn with Gitrog and I blew up everyone's lands and and John left the table and mm-hmm. didn't come back. Was that too much? Should I apologize for that? You know, do I need to feel the need to apologize? And everyone goes, yeah, like that was actually really tough. That's John's first time playing. And you go, oh, well, this is a great learning moment for me. Yeah. Because now I know why I had to apologize. And the next time I play, I can actually build or play in a way that doesn't create a scenario where I genuinely need to say sorry. Right. And it's just... If you have this Get Rug deck and you know it takes these long turns, that that awareness is very helpful and helps when you know that you don't put yourself in situations where you feel self-conscious about going off or you wind up in the wrong conversation. So if you're like, like, are you guys or even if you're in a playgroup and you're playing your storm deck and you feel self-conscious about it, just check in with your opponents. You're like, is this taking too long? Are you guys upset? Because sometimes they're just like, no, we're having pizza. We're fine. We're doing great. Go ahead. Well, you're having pizza. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Don't touch my cards. And on top of that, listen to your deck. Just if yeah. you're playing your deck and you feel like you're doing something that's inappropriately powerful for your play group or the game that you're in, understand that about your deck and either adjust or know that going forward when you're talking about your deck in Rule Zero. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day, we still want you to be a courteous player. Mm. It, your opponents want you to be courteous and we all want to you know, have a good time. So... Just think about that first and foremost, that everyone is there to have a good time. So when you're apologizing, as as long as you don't need to apologize, don't feel the need to. Yeah. 
right? You're going to hopefully be able to gauge if things are going awry to the point where apology is necessary, mm. but still be courteous, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Our next bad habit <laughs> is a pretty fun one, and I do it all the time still, too. It's playing at sorcery speed. Dun, what are you dun, doing? Dun. Slow poke? Slow poke. Now, sorcery is not saying don't play them. Yeah. But if all you're doing is slow poking around and you never have... Okay, so here's the habit. <laughs> <laughs> This is something that's very common, especially in new players, but I think we all just get comfortable doing it, and mm -hmm. that extends later into your commander career, which is just casting all your spells in your main phase, going to combat, attacking, passing the turn, passing the turn <laughs> and going back to your pizza. You know, it's... We, we get very, a lot of pizza around this table. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> I never night. play commander without pizza. That's a good call. Um... Yeah, it, it, we get very comfortable just being like, these are the steps, I've done all the stuff, and now I'm tapped out, and this game's everybody else's problem. Yeah. But Commander is, with so many players, it's just this huge game that you're just like logging yourself out of 75% of the game when you play this way. Yeah, not just that, you're also conveying to the board that you have nothing else that you're doing, and they don't need to even consider you in the next things that they're doing, right? Like, oh, can they counterspell? Can they stop something? What's the, Why are they holding up that mana, right? Mm -hmm. So you're actually making yourself less of a presence at the board state as well, and that can sometimes be a bad thing because you want to be able to act and do things. So that's the problem with this, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to play, as you wrote here, Rachel, flat-footed. Commander is kind of like boxing, which I thought was really cool. You're playing on your toes. You're up, you're prepped, you're ready. Now, it doesn't mean you don't do things at sorcery speed. Sometimes you will tap out, but just doing it every time and thinking, oh, I'm just going to go to combat after I play all my spells. You're even giving up the chance to have a sneaky combat trick or make them like the example we talked about earlier. I have a 2-4 and you have a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. I swing at you for two. Do you block? I don't know. I like my 3-3 three, three and it feels like you have something. Yeah, because all my lands are untapped. You could have anything. I'll probably just take the two. Yeah. Because I'm not risking that 3-3 three, three just because Jimmy might have a pump spell. I could call his bluff, but mm, yeah, I don't know if it's it. worth it. Two damage. Now, if nothing. all my stuff was tapped out, I played some ramp, I have nothing open, I swung at that 2-4, do you block it? Mm, no. I'll take two. <laughs> really? You still don't block it even if all tapped out? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll block it then. Yeah, you'll block it then. Yeah, yeah. what are you going to do? So that's the problem, right? You're actually creating a worse game for yourself in a lot of ways because you're showing your hand, literally showing people your hand and, and not having a trick or even just holding up the fact that, you know what? Don't necessarily mess with me because I, I am the guy that does hold up some removal sometimes or I've got some interaction that I've got here and you're afraid of. Even if you don't threaten it. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's a, there's a ton of problems playing this way. I mean, in, just like in boxing, if you're playing flat-footed and you're on, like on your heels, you can just get knocked over by a board wipe <laughs> mm, right. or um, a, like an all-out attack. If somebody attacks you and you weren't ready for it, you're like, oh, I don't have any blockers and I don't have any mana, so I guess I die. Yeah. So um, many times I've seen that happen. Someone goes, okay, well... I have an instant in my hand, but you know, I'm just going to play everything, tap all out, and then they just get alpha striked. Yeah, what's year. the worst that could happen? You lose the you game. You lose the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and when you react at the first possible moment, you're sort of neglecting the next many moments that there could be something worse. There could be something that affects you more directly. Yeah. Like, obviously, there are moments where casting stuff on your turn is correct. You want to do it before a player on taps or you want to, you There's know. There's some combat stuff that you're doing with it, yeah. Yeah, but most of the time, holding interaction or even holding a draw spell until the last possible moment, make sure that you are light on your feet, you can react, you've got stuff you can do, your opponents aren't really sure what you've got, and they, they're like, oh, I guess they only have two things on board, you know? They don't they could just be not using all their mana. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've seen, yeah. It's, uh, how often have I seen this where you're all tapped out and you have like a two mana removal spell that's an mm -hmm. instant. Someone plays a crazy creature that goes around a couple turns. No one's able to deal with it. You untap, you're like, I got the mana. Now I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you could have just held that mana up and waited even longer because so what if someone plays something even crazier or what if someone even takes that creature out before you need to waste your removal spell on it. So yeah. there's just lots of different problems that can arise when you're just deciding that I'm only going to take my turn to play the game and not do anything else on anyone else's turn. Be precious about your cards. Yeah. That's so, part of the cure here. Yeah. Is first, just know which of your cards you can cast at instant speed. Mm -hmm. Does this have flash? Oh, this is an instant. I didn't even know that. 
uh, read your cards. They say what they do. <laughs> uh, Unless you're like, you know, do a draw spell that's an instant speed. Do it later. Because what if you have to discard the card? You don't get the land you're looking Or if you are looking for a land, then maybe you do cast an instant speed draw spell on your turn. Mm-hmm. But holding it up just gives you just more options and could protect you more from something that happens. Yeah. I, I think a great... If, if you find yourself tapped out a lot, if you find yourself not interacting on your opponent's turns very much, look at your decks. Count the number of instants you have. Count the number of activated abilities. Mm-hmm. See what you can use more reactively rather than proactively. And that'll put you in a position where you can adjust quicker to the changing board because a board can change so fast in yeah. Commander. Yeah, if you technically, let's say you had two identical power decks, but one just had more sorceries and one had more instants, right? Even in a in, in vacuum, if they sh- still are somehow equally powerful, powerful like the instants weren't as good or the sorceries were just particularly good the instance deck would still i think generally win a game over the sorceries deck one yeah it's just more flexible yeah so and the flexibility is big something i love playing instance i build a ton of instance into my deck and it's because it helps me engage with the game more if it's mm-hmm. i get to participate in so much more of the game if i have decks that or if i have cards that i can play on my opponent's turn yeah. it's not just my turn that i'm playing commander i'm always playing commander if i have options on other people's turns i'm always playing commander yeah <laughs> remember folks float like a butterfly sting like a hornet queen Whoosh. Very play cool. instance. They're very good. Yeah, play instance. All right, our next bad habit is one that I'm particularly guilty of, mm. but not anymore. I've made better choices in my more recent magic career. It's keeping sketchy hands. Yeah, stop it. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Jimmy? You what? You missed another land drop? That's right. You're keeping a hand because it's got the coolest card in your deck in it. That's a six drop <laughs> and two lands and no ramp or card draw. And here's the bad thing is like most of the times you hear this before it happens and you know what's happening. They go, oh man, this is a really bad keep, but I'm, I'm going to keep it. And I just think, Godspeed, young man. Don't, don't keep it. <laughs> I hope you have a great game. <laughs> <laughs> There's a free mulligan in Commander. Yeah. <laughs> There's a better one coming. There's, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it, your deck is full of sweet cards that you're going to be excited to see. Exactly. If you do not have a hand that you can play early, find another hand i'm begging you yeah because here's the problem <laughs> people will keep hands for the potential to win the game you're like it's a very explosive hand it can do some like crazy stuff if this happens or i've got if one that piece happens. of the combo already it's really sweet so you're risking you're taking that risk at the, for an opportunity to win more but you're risking not playing the next hour and a half that's a big problem that's a huge risk right i like i would rather play for the next hour and a half than win that game because at least I I participated, you know, now I played like I maybe did 20 more things than trying to get that two card combo off or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I didn't like, I didn't win the game, but I did actually like spend the next hour and a half of my time having a nice time with my friends versus risking it all to like win really fast. And it's also a problem for your friends because they don't want to play a three player game or they don't want you to make a spite play where you're like, I only have one man. I'm just going to remove it on this thing. Whatever I can see. Like it's the worst. (laughs) that's absolutely the worst it's terrible not having your lands feels so bad and you're just sitting there like it feels like you're not allowed to play with the toys everybody else is playing with because you don't have the mana so just do your future self a favor and mulligan always do your future self a favor to be honest that's just great life advice Mm -hmm. so the cure yeah mulligan take a new hand if you are you know goldfishing your deck a bunch and you realize hey i never draw good hands why is that it's like oh i've got too many high drops i'm not building my curve correctly you can also learn from these moments so that you don't even build decks in a way that gives you sketchy hands to keep more often than not right ask yourself is it worth it if this works out perfectly is it worth me maybe not participating for the next two hours me watching my friends hang out for two hours all i need to do is draw two lands off the top might be the worst thing you could ever tell yourself in magic the gathering you won't yeah and ask yourself too it's a great way to look at your hand if you drew no cards for the rest of the game could you still play magic the gathering Mm. if the answer is no then you should seriously reconsider that hand Yeah, mulliganing is really tricky and we're not going to spend a ton of time teaching you how to do that because Jimmy already has. No way. Check out the How to Mulligan episode with DJ and Jimmy. It's really great. It came out recently and they go into a lot of the minutia of what it means to keep a good hand and what a good hand even looks like Yeah. and how to determine a good hand for your deck. Yep, yep, absolutely. So yeah, one land in the soul ring, don't do it. Even if you have a Sensei's Divining Top, Jimmy. (laughs) 
I kept an Jimmy, ancient please. tomb and Jimmy, a, please don't one me. land hand with ancient tomb and Sensei's divining top. And I was like, this definitely gets there. Spoiler alert, did not get there. It's a good way to uh, do a lot of damage to yourself. Yeah, and a good way to look like a fool. Mm. Okay, <laughs> before we get into some other incredible bad habits, not so incredible because we want to fix them, we got to hear a message from our mid sponsors. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I love playing against Jimmy. <laughs> it's easy mode. I know, you get him the tiniest bit salty and his whole game falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to play! <gasps> what happened? Something's changed. He's my best self, thanks to therapy. No! I used to let little things get under my skin on and off the battlefield, but working with a therapist has helped me feel empowered and ready to take on whatever life throws at me. They guided me towards healthy coping skills and becoming a more patient person. And if you're thinking about therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to be matched with a therapist, then you can switch at any time. Thanks to therapy, now when I get salty, it's just for the lulls. Ha, crater hoof. I win. And I'm emotionally healthy enough to accept that. Congratulations, me! If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash command zone today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash command zone. Psst, over here on your shoulder. It's me, Auntie Blight, bad influence. This year, I made a resolution to give a bit of good advice along with the bad. But good advice leaves a sour taste in my mouth, so I'm getting it all done at once. You ready? Here it is. Buy Raycon wireless earbuds. I spend a lot of time by your ears, so I know you're listening to all sorts of podcasts, news, music, you name it. And all those things just sound better on Raycons. I use mine for audiobooks, or a little blight reading, as I like to call it. And with their earbud tap functions, they're easy to pause whenever a gullible rube needs misleading. Psst, don't pay the one. You need that talisman now. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound incredible. And those optimized gel tips mean a perfect in-ear fit, so they aren't falling out no matter how much I tug on them. Plus, Raycon's are only half the price of other premium brands, so you don't have to make a deal with the devil to be able to afford them. And with awareness mode, you can still hear all my horrible advice. Trust me, I've got some humdingers coming up this year. Just the worst. You're gonna love them. Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash command to score 15% off. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about bad habits that you want to quit in Commander 20 in in 2023. These are your New Year's resolutions. We're 24, gonna- 25, 26, every year you're going to quit. But the, yeah, we're done with these. We're not doing them anymore. And the sixth one we're going to talk about is not... Touching cards without asking. Whoops, that's me. I do this a lot. This is this is a fairly innocuous habit. Yeah, this isn't game breaking. This isn't end the world type of stuff. But it is something that comes up actually. You think less often, but I hear it all the time. Which is just like, yeah, I, I really hope people you know don't just grab my cards without asking. <laughs> yeah, if you're and it, we're not saying that it is bad to not know what a card does. The problem with this is when you reach out onto somebody's board state and take a card off of their board and read it, because these are things people are really precious about. They can be really expensive, yeah. and sometimes they're using it like this is a habit that you teach two-year-olds right is you ask for things <laughs> before you grab them and put them in your mouth that's a good Please point don't. though because we are naturally we're little monkey hands we want to grab things we got our little opposable thumbsies <laughs> so it's very natural for you to want to pick up stuff and in play groups with your best friends that you know each other really well and you're doing it all the time no prob if you're going to an lgs you're going to a magic con you're playing a game for the first time and you don't know the other person well they have their own Boundaries. Reality and boundaries, yeah. And <laughs> they may not want to play the same way you play with your play group and vice versa. Mm. So it's obviously a really common habit because the game's complex. Yeah. I'm going to see a card that I've never seen before in a frame that I've never seen before. Guaranteed every game. But I'm not going to take it upon myself to be the one grabbing the cards. I think I'd actually just rather, you know, ask them. But yeah. let's talk about... So here's the problem, the problem with grabbing. First of all, People do it all the time and they have gross fingers. Like I'm at my game <laughs> store and people are eating Cheetos and grabbing cards off my table. Oh my. And it's like, I can't, or pizza. this is gross. Or pizza. You just pick up a big old like pizza smear on uh, my Ultra Pro sleeves. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I hate to see a card come back and just have a clear thumbprint on it. It's like, oh, I need that. 
<laughs> yeah, like minimally, minimally, you interrupt what they're doing. Like I've, I've cast <laughs> spells that I'm using and trying to figure stuff out and people uh, just yoink it while I'm like, trying to uh, sort. Like I wasn't <laughs> done with my turn, please. But at worst, like you damage their cards or you damage their sleeves or you gunk up their, their box or something Or you like damage that. your burgeoning friendship. Yeah. Because you did because something you got without gross asking. Gross little monkey paws. Yeah. And the cure is pretty simple. Just ask. ask. Just ask. Yeah, it's very easy. Just like, hey, uh, do you mind if I read your card? Oh, can I take a look at that card? Even I've done this time because I just think a card looks cool. Yeah. Hey, can I see that? Yeah, I oh, want to see wow. your altered card. I want to look at this version of yeah. the card. And if you want to, please, like most people are excited to show off their cards. But it is yeah. polite to ask before taking something from them. And a lot of times, too, I'll just say, hey, what does that do? Because sometimes I don't want to sit there and read it. And then I'm the one explaining it to the table. No, no, let them do it. <laughs> I'm trusting you. It's in your deck, please. As In terms of also representing your board, say hopefully they represent their cards well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, if you don't know what a card does, ask them to read it for you or ask to read the card or look the card up on your phone. Yeah, ask get them the name. what the name is. Go to Scryfall or Gatherer. They're going to have the errata text that's going to be the clearest way to know what the card does anyway. yeah that's a really good point some old cards that people play like all hollows eve or whatever have crazy text on them you have yeah. no idea what's going on <laughs> uh and so gatherer like um the old anime dead text for instance yeah, right the old insane. necropotence text you have no idea what's going on so mm -hmm. sometimes it is just better for you to have that responsibility on yourself if you want to learn it just have look up the card yeah this Next one is also about manners. Please quit this in 2023. Quit scrolling during the game. Stop it. Get yeah. off your phone, please. That's the habit. It's very simple. You're looking at your phone. You're not being engaged with the game. You are being distracted when things are happening. You're not paying attention because you're looking at your phone or you're doing something else instead. Dead. And we're not talking about looking up cards or clarifying rulings or that kind of thing. Of course, your phone is a resource. We get that. But it's when you disengage with the game because it causes problems. Yeah. And it's just the general problem is that it is pretty rude, right? It's not proper manners. It's not good etiquette to just be on your phone all the time when you're hanging out with other people. If you go to see your friends and you're just staring at your phone the whole time, are you being a great friend in that moment? I don't know. It kind of looks like you don't want to be here kind of looks like you're not interested and even though that may not be your intention that doesn't stop how it usually comes off when i see that someone disengages to go on their phone i think oh they must have something more important otherwise they wouldn't be looking at their phone but yeah. what if you don't have anything important and other people are thinking that <gasps> oh no it may require an apology <laughs> <laughs> and we get it there can be a ton of downtime in commander that you're waiting for your opponent to figure out their very complicated turn we understand but this is a social format we're here to hang out with each other we're here to talk talk about magic or talk about other things mm -hmm. if you're just hanging out with your friends engage with the table or ask questions uh oh, as things are happening yeah oh, what does that are, do again so you don't find yourself on your phone and be like oh well when did that enchantment come out <laughs> when did that when did that come down I don't wait wait that. how is that a seven seven <laughs> yes oh, i was I, gonna block if i knew that was a seven seven yeah reginald we explained this three turns ago <laughs> it's just not fun to wind the game back for somebody who's isn't paying attention and is already being rude yeah exactly and you don't want that to also become another habit where they're like well no worries they're always going to rewind the game for me and figure it out because then yeah. you're just encouraging that behavior too right so this is also on the other people to keep it up and it's really easy it's like hey guys let's focus on the game or like i, I kind of only have half an hour and we, i gotta play fast here or whatever it is there's ways to get players back into the game yeah and this is a good one let's get into the cure for this habit uh we understand that your phone can be addicting that you're always your natural like reaction when you have downtime is to reach for your phone yeah the way that i started breaking this habit especially in commander games is just offer my phone for a, the lifelinker app oh yeah it's like now it's gone it's in prison it's holding the life totals <laughs> and now i like i don't have access to my phone anymore you're, you're forced to engage and your phone's like thank goodness a purpose beyond twitter <laughs> a break <laughs> a break oh look many people enjoy my ability to do I've things been scrolling for hours we also have this brand new app that we premiered at game nights live at magic con vegas and it's going to make a return probably at magic con philly when we go there this year but it's the commander clock if you look up commander clock on the ios store i believe it's coming to android soon um it's a really simple thing it's basically a chess clock for playing magic and you yeah. can set the time to whatever you want it's also a great way to be like hey 
There is uh, 20 minutes on every player's clock here. That guarantees, no matter what happens, this game will be less than 80 minutes total. Mm -hmm. And that can sometimes be a really attractive thing if you're trying to get multiple games in a night. It's great. Yeah. It so. also creates a sense of urgency where you're engaged with the game and you're trying to move fast and you're paying attention to priority yeah. because you want to make sure that you're protecting your time on the clock. I know uh, some people are like, oh, I don't want to do that and like limiting my time. It's like, no, you're, you're doing it so that everyone is like, hey, there's a beat to this game now. We're yeah. all in the same rhythm and we're on this train it's together. It's like a metronome, basically. Basically, yeah, yeah. And you can't just whip out your phone because you're going to miss something and that's actually going to affect your game in a way it's that it's going to cost know. you time. Yeah, exactly. Another way to do it is play more instance, play more activated abilities, Ooh, yeah. stuff you can do at instant speed. It's hard to be on your phone when you have options and you need to be able to respond to stuff. Yeah. If you're not paying attention, like if you're playing sorcery speed and you tap out, of course, you can get on your phone and disappear for a little while. But if you have instance, you're focused, you have to be because that's what your cards do. Yeah, and if your opponent's taking a long turn, engage with your other opponents, not your phone. There are players around you, people you may not see on a regular basis, people you may have just met for the first time. Hey, can I see what that card does? Mm. Wow, that's a really cool foil you got there. Is this so a new ways. deck? Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, tell me about it. Hey, is there anything I should, like, hey, do you want to team up on just something? Right? There's so much you can do in that downtime mm. as someone is pondering how to take their five-minute turn. Yeah, or just plan your next turn, you know? There's lots yeah, to do <laughs> in a commander <laughs> that's game. That's a good point. Great there's cure. A, there's Look a little... at your own dang hand and board stain. Figure <laughs> out what you Know you're what you're do. doing. Yeah, if they get off their phone and don't know what they're doing on their next turn, oh, yeah. so frustrating. I take pride in when they go, pass turn to you, Jimmy. I untap. Mm -hmm. I execute my turn exactly yeah, how I planned it, and I go pass turn. I'm like, nice. I'm efficient. I'm making this game mm. go quickly and maybe we'll get more games in as a result. Absolutely. All right. Next one is a big one. Uh, this bad habit, you got to kick. Passing on priority. Yeah, this is a tough one because priority is does seem very complicated. And in casual games, we tend to be very casual about it. Right. But priority is very important in multiplayer games. And for those who are not familiar, priority is when anything happens. When Literally any, anything. When anything, Pretty much except anything, for sorry. lands, yeah. when anything <laughs> enters the stack, all players in the game get an opportunity to respond to it. And they just get one. So it's, if I, if I cast a Crater of Behemoth, Jimmy gets a moment to respond. Then if you're like, I don't have anything past priority, it goes to the next player. Then they the have an player. opportunity to respond and then the next player and back to me. And if it gets back to me, Crater Hoof responds or er, er, resolves. resolves and that's it. Yeah. And here's the thing, even when Crater resolves and then the trigger goes on the stack and then people can respond to it as well, right? That's so the thing. Understanding priority means you're also going to play the game correctly because that's the problem. Mm. If you are just jumping priority or you're waiting even worse and you go, you, someone plays something and you're like, I can respond to this, but I'm just going to see if anyone else does anything first, even though I'm next in turn order. Yeah. What you're actually doing is angle shooting. You're not playing the game correctly. You're playing in a bit of a conniving way. Taking advantage of the casual format of, of Commander. Yeah. Yeah, it's... That's a problem. You don't want to do that. Yeah, it's cheating. It's technically cheating. Please yeah. don't do it. And you're also maybe stepping on someone else's time to react. Like, let's say it's turn order and I'm last in turn order, but I just go, I'm going to do this. And someone else goes, hold on, I actually had an effect that I need to resolve first. Right. Then you're making the more complicated situation. So it's just a thing that makes the game more confusing than it needs to because mm -hmm. it is a complicated game to begin with. Yeah, the more players you add, the more complicated the game is. And the thing is, it's... Sounds complicated and unnecessary, but it actually simplifies things because yeah. it means that we're not all active, like jumping on top of each other. To we all agree to a set of rules that allows yeah. us to play the same play the game. game. These are the, the rules. At an experience table, someone does something and they pause mm -hmm. and they go, all right, active turn order or whatever. Hey, do you want to do anything, Julia? Julia goes, no, I'm going to pass to you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you go, okay, I have a response. I'm going to do this. I look at my hand. I'm like, hmm, I have nothing. I'm going to pass priority. Yep. The original player goes again. But and that makes it structured, clean. Everyone's abiding by the rules. No one's angle shooting. And you're playing the game as it's meant to be played. Yeah, that's the cure to this is slowing down, especially in giant like moments in a game where yeah. you're like, there is a crater hoof on the stack or there's a big, like a big scary commander is coming down. And everyone's got their own game plans and what they need to do. And they're going to need to execute it in the right orders. Right. So... If you're, if you're casting something huge or if an opponent has just casted something huge, take the initiative and offer priority around the table. Do you have a response? Do you have a response? Okay, I'm going to respond. Make sure that you go through this structure in these like giant pivotal moments. You probably don't have to do this after a rampant growth or like little <laughs> things. That's, but it, you know, it's good practice. It's the same as like, all right, I'm going to combat. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to declare attackers. Mm -hmm. Do you declare blockers? Go to damage, end of combat. 
And if you rush through all those steps, you're cutting off other players' ability to, to respond in the way that they want to, and you're maybe forcing a mistake, or you're making a mistake even worse. Yeah. So. And if this is super confusing, which it absolutely is, there's a whole <laughs> episode about this. It is a little bit of an old one. It's episode 267. It's called The Power of Priority and the Stack. You can check it out on our YouTube channel, and they go through the stack and how to... Yeah, how priority works, example situations. There's a judge they're talking to about this as well. Mm. And it's an important episode, especially if you're looking to level up your Magic the Gathering play and sort of get to that next level. Um, this definitely is one of those thresholds where you don't play with this really with an understanding at the beginning, but as you get better and better, priority and understanding the stack is a huge part of learning how to win games and understand, you know, just getting there to the victory. Yeah. Okay. All right. This next one uh, is all about priority and knowing when to respond. It's this bad habit is shortcutting combos. Okay. This is when this is when you a player thinks they have the win and they're like, I cast this, I cast that, and I go infinite. I win. <laughs> yeah, they don't explain the combo, and they you don't, don't even know how you they win. Happening. Yeah, wait, is it a combat <laughs> win? Are you is there? Are you milling yourself out? What are you actually what is, doing? What is happening right now? And this comes from an assumption that everybody at the table knows what's going on knows how these two cards interact. Uh, and obviously this causes problems because people don't always know what's going on. Yeah, even Josh and myself, we've played this game for eight years. We talk about it almost every single day. Every time I play a game, there is a moment where I go, hold on, can you explain how this is happening again? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's complicated, but that just goes to show you how complex the game is that even people that really live and breathe this stuff every day still have tons of problems. Yeah, and when people shortcut their combos and assume everybody knows what's going on, it's hard to know when you can interact or what pieces are even important, and it can leave players feeling unsatisfied that they're like not sure how they died, yeah. but this player is I'm saying dead. that I died, so I suppose I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah, and it assumes, too, that there is an interaction if you play it that mm. way. If you go, okay, well, these two cards combo off, and then I get infinite this, and I win. And especially if your combo sorcery speed or whatever, like, there are ways your opponents may be reacting, and maybe they've been planning for this, too. So rushing through it actually puts you at a disadvantage. Because sometimes I've seen someone go, like, all right, I'm going to play this, this, and that, and I win. And someone goes, hold on, I was going to react to the second thing you played yeah. before you even got the third one down. And that leads to mistakes by the combo player. And that, you know, you don't want to look foolish at the table. That That is a bad feeling for sure when it comes to magic playing. Yeah, I mean, if you rush through your combo, you can rush through like onboard interaction. You can rush through like, you're like, oh my gosh, this person has a soul guide lantern. I can't even execute this combo right. because they can exile my graveyard at instant speed. Or, oh, my combo piece that I needed is actually in exile right now. So I can't Get do, I can't even do this right now. Yeah. And you, then you've just, you know, sort of blown your whole plan and you don't have a way to actually execute it so recognize that magic is complicated and once again demonstrate this cure slow down slow down please demonstrate your loop at least once you should be able to say this is how my combo works this causes this to happen this causes this to happen this causes this to happen and we go back to the beginning yeah or even if you don't need to with your play group right you guys play together maybe you've done it with them before you should still know how to explain a combo because that to me is actually one of the biggest problems is someone puts a combo into their deck and they don't know how it works because mm -hmm. the likelihood of that messing up is way higher because you don't understand the exact interaction of how this interaction goes but you read about somewhere you maybe watched it on the command zone video and that may lead to these feel bads so understand and even if you don't need to be able to explain your combos yeah and one more important part about this is i think especially if you're playing in a casual setting you're playing with strangers who maybe don't know what's happening yeah answer questions about how to interact if somebody has an interaction spell and they're like i think i can use it but i'm not really sure where i can interrupt it you it's nice as the combo player to be like, if you cast it here, that interrupts the loop. Yeah. That makes you a better person. That makes them a better <laughs> magic player. And it means that you're not just winning because somebody was Didn't confused because it, yeah. you ran through your combo and it wasn't explained properly. So give everybody a good opportunity to interact, especially if you're a com combo player. It's a casual format. It is not their responsibility to know every single combo in Magic. It is your combo. Please be kind. It may also be that combo players like explaining the combo more than playing the combo. It's pretty you. sweet. So Combos are cool. <laughs> Did you see what just happened? Yeah, I know that yeah. you interacted with it, but like, look what's going to happen. But They're it was pretty cool. cool. I was going to make infinite hippo. Yeah, exactly. And you did. Yeah. It was um, a hippo parade. If you want to be a better combo player, there is also an episode about that. Check out Combo Masterclass with Jim LePage uh, from the Spike Feeders. He came on, talks about 
playing combo better and understanding combo. Yeah. They also have a great series on the Spike Feeders uh, that they explain multiple combos and where you can interact and ways that you can interact or interrupt yeah. these combos. So check those out as well. Check them out. Love Jim. All right. Uh, great name, that guy. Yeah. Next up, we have a very common one, one that we've even used on the show, I believe, at some point. We all sort of did it when we started it out, and we no longer do it anymore, but it is rolling dice or randomizing your attacks, particularly in the early game. It's a pretty easy habit. You've got a 2-2 out. Everyone else has got nothing. Who am I going to attack out of my three opponents? Uh, all right, you're 1-2, to two, you're 3-4, to four, you're 5-6. to six, You roll a dice and make that decision then and there. And it happens all the time because you don't want to create bad blood. Yeah. I don't want to piss anyone else off right now. I, don't I just want to be wanna, mean. Yeah, I'm so, just, yeah, I don't want to pick on you. I'm just going to swing this out. Or someone random. That's how I'm going to do it. Mm. A lot this, of problems, though. <laughs> there, it does create a bit of a problem because, first of all, you're just taking a game action without having any consideration for the long game, right? It's just, you're just mm -hmm. missing an opportunity to make the right decision because usually there's like a player who's who's ahead or a player who you're worried about and right. you're just like, ah, I'll attack whoever. It's like, Commander is sort of one on the margins, so this little chip damage can be the difference. Yeah, absolutely. So many games have been like determined by one or two damage yeah right it's like oh if i only had gotten one more blood artist trigger or if i had only done that damage at the beginning of the game i would have won so you make those mistakes when you just randomly go i'm just going to randomly attack someone yeah play purposefully yeah and um, if you're not at the point too by the way to like confidently know who to attack then sure you can still play it sort of like with this like randomized bit here and there but ask the table ask the table too there's lots of ways to understand oh i get it yeah you're right i should attack them and i think for the most part commander players are very gracious people and yeah. play groups will help you get there because we're all trying to play this game for fun together yeah the other problem with this is it doesn't really give you the threat neutrality that i think people think it gets them <laughs> yeah and it like it's like okay well if i don't act attack anybody on purpose then no one will not like me and it's like i don't know now you're sort of a wild card yeah now i kind now of want to trust you at all i think i am going to swing at you because of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't do that again yeah create you you just can't really be trusted to make the correct decision so yeah. now you're confusing so what's the cure for this very common habit mm. i mean this is just learning how to be decisive about your commander decisions right yeah. so ask yourself which player are you most worried about mm -hmm. which player has the most resources or the most powerful commander or maybe there's a commander that you're like you know what this is probably going to counter my strategy ah. I'm playing voltron they're playing like a black graveyard deck yeah. i need to get some damage in early here so it's important that i attack them now yeah exactly and Knowing that too, you're just going to be a better player by being able to look around the table, be like, um, that commander kind of counters me. You know, I'm just going to swing this one damage at you. And if you're playing with other players that are on the same page or are growing to be on the same page, they're going to go, sure, that's fine. Yeah, I'll take I'm not damage. upset at you for making a decision, right? I don't feel like you're picking on me. I feel like you're making, maybe you're wrong, but that's fine too, because you made a decision and commander is a game. You should familiarize yourself with getting attacked by creatures and taking damage. That's like the most fundamental part of the magic outside of playing Lance and casting your spells. Yeah. Surprise! We've got an 11th habit that you need to quit doing this year. It's a bonus for the new year. And the, yeah, it's an 11th hour edition. It's not <laughs> tapping correctly. So yeah. this is a habit that I still suffer from all the time. You know, you've seen it at the table. Someone taps a bunch of stuff, plays some spells and goes, oh, wait, actually, can I tap differently? I forgot I needed a red to do this. And mm -hmm. usually it's like, sure, whatever. Sometimes it's even worse, though, because the habit of like, oh, shoot, I need to take something back because I didn't have the right mana in the first place. That gets a little hairy. And that's one of the big problems about not tapping correctly or not being really mindful about what you're doing to tap to cast your spells is you're kind of rushing maybe to resolve the spell because it's so sweet, but you didn't realize you didn't have a two black black for the damnation that you want to cast. And you already cleaned up the board and everybody got their tokens away and you're like, oh, oh hey, sorry. everyone, I'm so sorry. I kind of cheated because I wasn't tapping correctly. Whoops. It's or, tough. And it's, it's, <laughs> it is tough. It is tough. It's really hard. But it's like, especially if you're playing five color decks, like it, there, it's very hard to know what you're going to need. And you just have to be extre extremely thoughtful about your lands and knowing yeah. the priority 
in your deck of what you want to tap first, what land is are important for you to leave open. You're like, I have a counter spell. I want to try to leave up blue, blue, or yeah. my deck is mostly red. I want to make sure I have some access to red mana at the yeah, end. Yeah, that dragon, I need to be able to cast it, so I should use my colorless mana first. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff doesn't get taught when you first start playing Magic, and t typically it's something that you have to learn over time by making the hard mistake of, oops, I tapped incorrectly. Yeah. Oh, and I'm not, I, I think it's too late to get a take back. So by improving this single factor, I think you're going to see a big improvement in your gameplay because it means, again, you're being more thoughtful about your decisions and you're making better and right decisions. So how do you get better at this? What's the cure to this uh, bad habit? I think you just need to know the priority, like you said, of your lands. If you have a bunch of triumphs that tap for three colors and you have a bunch of basics that tap for one color, when you're casting a spell that costs two blue blue, you're not going to use your triumphs first. There is a priority order here. Mm. Two blue blue, let's use a mana rock for that two colorless, and let's use these two islands instead of the triumphs that tap for blue, because this leaves me open to maybe cast more spells. Maybe the mm -hmm. two blue blue draws you some more stuff. So knowing your deck really well and knowing, again, what's in there is a big way to make sure that you're just preparing yourself to tap correctly and not making an easy mistake that will hurt you later on. Yeah, this just takes practice. This is something that you can focus on in learning your mana bases and learning how what lands are important when. And you yeah. can learn this from watching streamers or watching Commander gameplay mm -hmm. and seeing how other people prioritize their, their lands or by goldfishing your deck. Just yeah. learning what lands, it's nice to have two red open because this is a very red deck. Yeah. Or I know that like if a wheel happens, I'm likely to rip a white instant. So I want to make sure I have white mana open. Yeah, I have these pain lands, but I know that I can use them earlier on to cast colorless spells mm -hmm. or things with colorless mana in them. Or, hey, if I'm using this signet, I understand that it only, it has to have a mana coming to tap it. So I'm always going to use this land mm -hmm. that has an activated ability like War Room that I don't need till later, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding those small little interactions will really optimize the way you play your game. And yeah. also, if you're playing on MTG Arena a bunch, turn off Auto Tapper. Yeah, get and some just practice in. Click those lands yourself and see, you know, and sometimes Auto Tapper is very wrong as well. So it's a good thing to do. <laughs> all right. That are all the habits that we are focusing on for this year. There's there could be there could be more. Could uh, be. Oh, and that's, definitely. <laughs> and that's the question to the listeners. What commander habits drive you crazy in yeah. your playgroup or at your game store? What are your worst commander habits? Are you resolving to fix them this year? And how are you going to work on getting better at them? Yeah, one habit that I am going to be adding to my good habits is every time I go to cardkingdom.com, I'm going to add the letters slash command afterwards and then hit enter and go to the website because that's going to apply the promo code for our show, The Command Zone. And you're supporting the podcast game. That's all the stuff we do here at the studio to bring you this awesome magic content. And you're going to get the cards you need to have some of that magic fun yourself. That's the beauty of all of this. Cardkingdom.com slash command. You're going to buy magic cards anyway why not shop from a place that you can get all your cards in a single package they've got tons of other cool things they got like starter decks and intro things there they have ways for you to trade in your cards cardkingdom.com slash command is all you have to do to enter the affiliate code and once you're on the website just browse it like normal get the cards you need and hey play the game of magic you want <laughs> <laughs> Once you have those cards in hand, you're going to want to protect them. Go to ultrapro.com slash command. You can also support the show while picking up all of the accessories that you need to play magic well to represent your board state Indeed. accurately. Pick up some Ultra Pro dice. They have very clear, very definitive numerical I dice like that them. I like using. Uh, they also have Planeswalker dice, which are very cool. Yeah. Uh, for they, they are specifically loyalty counter dice, which is awesome. If you want to resolve to make your board state as intimidating and beautiful as possible, <laughs> go see if they have your commander on some play mats yeah. because they have original magic art or official magic art and they have deck boxes and sleeves you can make everything match sometimes really. they'll have stuff that your lgs doesn't have like yeah. some of the special releases with the secret lair arts and all that mm -hmm. stuff and they sell it pretty quickly too so it's a great place just to pay attention to yeah sign up for their main mailing list make sure you get notifications on secret lair drops and on all of the sales that they have on ultrapro.com slash command all right, end step. Talk about something cool outside the world of magic. It is the new year. Let's mm -hmm. talk about some New Year's resolutions that aren't magic related. Mine's pretty simple. I want to make every month resolutions. Ooh. Not just a single New Year. Wait, right? Like, I got many months of the year. Why not give myself 12 shots and making some cool resolutions instead yeah, of just improve one? Improve all year long. Exactly. I that. Yeah. I, uh, I think this year is going to be the year that I learn to cook. I'm going to plan <laughs> ahead. I'm going to do some meal prep. I'm going to try and bring my lunch more. It's definitely something that I need to work on nice. uh, to make myself a little 
little bit healthier and save some money. Definitely yeah. saving some money if you're cooking for yourself. I know, yeah. especially in a city like LA. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness. All right. Big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. We got Damon Lenz, Arthur Metalcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nunn, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Walder, Garav Galad, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limberger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yep, Eric Lem, and Joshua Lee Kawhi. How is it? He's out there freezing in the cold. We're in here. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty cold in the podcast room, too. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cold in here as well. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year, everybody, New Year, and make those commander resolutions. We'll see you next time. Peace out. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>